Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another Read Along. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, for, for uh, pulling me out of the darkness of the life that I was in, and bringing me into His life, at light, and um, allowing me to do these things for His glory. Okay, all praise and honor, and um, everything goes to Him. He's the one that makes it possible. So, um... Today we're going to be reading out of the book of James. Please open up your Bibles to James chapter 1. Okay. Alright, greetings to the twelve tribes. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Okay. Profiting from trials, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Okay, your faith is being tested when you when you fall into all kinds of problems. Okay, and um, you know, so many of us we forget that, and when so bad things happen, we uh, we get angry, we get disappointed. Um, we're anything but joyful, right? But you know, um, there are people who actually fall into uh, real um, persecution and trials. Um, things that we can't even imagine, where they actually lose their life for their faith. And I've heard of accounts of people singing before being beheaded and burned in places like Nigeria and uh, in Iran and stuff. Um, they actually are singing, you know. So, I mean, compared to some of us, I mean, I know that um, if I'm not careful, I'm quick to complain too. But let us count it as all joy when we fall into these various trials, knowing that we are being tested. Okay? And this, this testing will produce patience. You know, patience and long-suffering, those are, those are godly fruit. Those are fruits of the Spirit. Okay? Verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work. Okay? You can't have patience without testing. You know, if you've never been made to stick things out, then you're not going to learn patience, right? That you may be perfect and complete. That you may be perfect and complete. The Lord says in uh, Matthew uh, 5.24, I believe, be perfect as he is perfect. And you think, well, people cannot be perfect, right? Well, yeah, this is how. Okay. Let, your per let patience have its perfect work. Okay. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing through patience. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If you ask, seek, and knock, you will receive. Okay? But let, at, but let him ask in faith. Okay? If you're half doubting when you ask, you're not going to get it. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is, double, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, I mean, if we're, like, doubting or, like you know, half, oh, well, if you will, Lord, then, you know, without faith it's impossible to please the Lord, so you're not going to get what you're asking for. Also, too, you have to remember that not everything we ask for we're going to get if it's outside of His will. If He has, oh, if His will is for something different or something better, then you're not going to get it, okay? If you're asking for a Lamborghini, that's, you're probably not going to get it, okay? So anyway, um, the perspective of rich and poor. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Okay, in his uh, building of, of others, okay? But the rich in his humiliation, okay? Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it, than it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Okay? Don't pursue after, you know, worldly riches. Pursue after God. Loving God under trials. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which James has promised to those who love him. Okay? Let no one say that he is tempted. Did I read that right? <laughs> I think I meant it said James or something. I forget. But anyway, I was thinking a thought. It just went through my mind, okay? About James, okay? James is the half-brother of Jesus, right? And he says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. 
Okay, so I was thinking about James that went, James, you know, went through my mind because James, I believe, is the first apostle, um, one of the first apostles of the twelve that was actually um, killed. I think he was beheaded. Hmm, I have to check Acts again, but I believe he was one of the first ones, you know? But he was more, one of the more quiet ones, I think, maybe, you know? And he doubted the Lord. In fact, you know, his brothers, it's, it says in, in, uh, in Matthew, I believe, Matthew, and what is it, Luke, maybe? Um, that they uh, didn't believe in, him, in their brother Jesus, you know? But after his brother rose again from the dead, he believed, right? And he endured temptation and different things, and he endured, and he was patient in his, in his trials and stuff, and he was beheaded for his faith. So I think that's why this, that went shooting through my mind. But anyway, back to verse 12, okay? So, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. A lot of people do that. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he, he himself tempt anyone. He allows us to be tempted, but he's not the one that's tempting us. Okay? But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. You, you are tempting yourself when you draw yourself, you know, away by your own desires. And enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Okay? It brings forth death. So do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay? So whatever is good is from above. Whatever is not good is, well, from the other dude. Okay? Quality is needed in trials. It's from below, the earth, the cursed earth, and the, and the, you know, from Satan himself, okay? So, so then, my beloved br brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Okay, some of us suffer from anger issues and wrath and... You know, I'm kind of one of those people that suffers from that, and um, the world, the Lord is uh, working with me in this area. But we should be swift to hear, slow to speak, you know, slow to wrath. And I think that if we're if we're more willing to listen to one another and less willing to, you know, think about what we want to say while the other person's still talking, <laughs> we might be a little bit slower to wrath. Okay? Doers, not hearers only. Okay, verse 21. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Okay, so you deceive yourself if you say, um, I'm a Christian, I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But then you don't, you don't uh, do anything. You know, your works, there's no works, there's no fruit. You're not doing anything that is that would set you apart from the world. Okay? You're deceiving yourself if you say that. And you're not doing anything that's setting you apart. Okay? You're not doing anything to be sanctified or holy. You're not repenting. You're not changing. Then you're deceiving yourself. Okay? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what the man he, what kind of man he was. Okay, but he who looks into the, uh, looks into the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, a doer of the work. Hmm, interesting. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but, de but deceives his own heart, this one's religious religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted. Keep oneself unspotted from the world. Be stained and spotted by the world, okay? That 
that's pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father, okay? So, uh, moving on to chapter 2, then. Okay. Beware of personal favoritism. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if, for if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in, in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, You sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, You stand there, or sit here at my footstool. Stool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves, and become judges with evil thoughts? Okay, if those of you who say do not judge, yeah, we're not to judge with hypocrisy and evil thoughts, okay? Read the whole story, read the whole book, read the whole, you know, um, all the verses on judgment, okay? And you will know. Okay, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? The poor in belongings and things and material things are rich in faith, okay? They're, they are chosen to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they, do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? Okay, if you, you know, they blaspheme the noble name which by which you are called. What's the noble name? Christian, Christian, so I'm Jesus Christ. Okay, they mock the Christians, okay? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well, but if you show partiality, you commit sin. Hmm. Did you get that? Love your neighbor as yourself. That means every neighbor, by the way. Um, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but they'll walk by homeless people and not give them the time of day or not even pay attention. They don't even notice that they're there, you know. But anyone with, with, with influence, you walk right to them, right? There was a movie star right in front of you, and there was a homeless guy on your left. Would you, which one would you go to first, you know? So, um, anyway... So if you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. This was uh, talked about by Jesus himself in Matthew 24, I believe. Okay. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, okay, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Okay, so speak and do as those those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, mercy, by the way, is what the Lord extends to us, okay? It's not giving us, mercy is not receiving the just punishment you deserve, okay? The wages of sin is death, we deserve death, okay? And hell and damnation, but through mercy we are spared, okay? Well, not through mercy, by his blood and sacrifice and his mercy we are spared from that. If we believe in his promises, we believe that he did die for our sins and he rose on the third day um, and he defeated death and the chains, he broke the chains of sin. If we believe that, okay, and we um, let him be the ruler of our lives, then his mercy will be poured out onto us, okay? So... Faith without works is dead, okay? What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Anyone can say they have faith, but if they don't have any works to back it up, I mean, what does it mean, right? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace and be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? How do you help the homeless guy... You know, and say, oh, have faith and you'll be, you'll be all right. But you don't give him any morsel of food. You don't give him a sandwich or a warm cup of corn soup or whatever. How does that help him? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Works by himself, works only, that's not going to save you. Works does not get you into heaven, but nor does faith only. Okay? But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by, by my works. Okay? It's, it's. If you have true faith, that should motivate you to works, okay? Good works for the Lord, for the Lord, for his glory. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe, okay? And tremble. But do you want to know, foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered 
he didn't just believe, he offered his son, Isaac, on the altar. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Working together, faith and works are, go hand in hand. And by works, faith was, was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Okay? So all of you need to read that. Verse 14 through <clears throat> 26. Okay? Likewise, was not uh, Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay, so that's something to consider. All right, so... Um, I know I did a little contemplating in the middle of there. I was, uh, I had a thought run through my head. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you was, if this message was hard to understand, um, but please go back and uh, read along with me in this bi in, in your Bibles. Okay, get in the habit of that. It's really important, especially especially in this day and age. Okay, where there's so much deception. First thing the Lord said when He was asked about um, how will we know this that when the signs of uh, you know the end are here when the you know coming out of the end of the age, and the very first thing he said in both, uh, well, not in both, but uh, Matthew 24, and in uh, Mark 13, and in uh, Luke 21, the very first thing he says is, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Well, if you do not know his holy word, if you do not know what he said, then you're going to be deceived. Okay? Don't be deceived. Read his word. Get into the habit of reading his word, okay? That way you'll know when somebody pretzels the scriptures or they take something out of context. You won't know if you're not in the word. Now, study and show yourself approved, okay? Also, make sure you pray every day, okay? Pray for uh, spiritual discernment. Pray for the other saints. That the Lord keeps them and, and, and uh, protects them, okay? Um, pray for the covering the, of the blood, you know? On yourself and your family and all you know everybody that you have contact with whether it be in person or through the internet you know um, we really need to pray for each other in these these wicked days I mean seriously it's getting more and more wicked every day these are perilous times we're living in okay if you don't believe it well then look around and read uh, 2nd Timothy okay anyway um, if you have a prayer request please let me know um, I don't. I know that I don't always get back to you guys, but I do read my mail and I do pray for you all. So um, I love you guys and I bless you in the mighty name of Yahshua Hamashiach. I'm out. Goodbye.